Hi, this is Tim. So here we are on the back side of our trainer, and here is our analog display. And you can see I haven't wired down these terminals right here. And for our milliamp signal, we're actually going to use our analog simulator in current source mode because it's just a little easier to control compared to the potentiometer. And I can show you a few things that will help you understand exactly how a milliamp signal is read by a PLCN. So we're going to start with the basics just like this shows. We're going to have our 4 to 20 milliamp output, which is going to be our analog simulator. And we're going to have our 4 to 20 milliamp input, which is going to be our meter. And right here is the plus and minus for our milliamp meter. And they go down to terminals 2 and 3, and that is our plus and minus. So we're going to connect the red wire off of our meter to the red post of our analog simulator. And we're going to connect the black wire of our meter to the black wire of our analog simulator. And that's all it takes. So as we bring the signal up, it starts incrementing over there. And there you go. It shows 20 milliamps on our analog simulator and 20 milliamps on our display. But now I want to do a little something to show you a little more about how it works. And we're going to come over here on the back side of our trainer and we're going to add an additional circuit. And just the same as you were adding a local display to a milliamp circuit, you don't tie it parallel like you would a voltage signal. You want to cut into the circuit and add something into it. So I'm going to add two terminal blocks to our trainer. And on your typical analog device, it's going to have a load resistance. And what that is, is it's a load that they put into that analog circuit so that they can read it. And I'm going to show you through this that what they're doing is they're actually using that load resistor and Ohm's law to read a voltage signal on the milliamp circuit. So right here, I have a 250 ohm resistor, which is a fairly common resistor for an analog circuit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it across the two terminal blocks that I've added. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our red wire off of the analog simulator. You can see I've taken it loose. It's showing open wire now. And I'm going to connect it to one of these terminal blocks. Now I'm going to take the other terminal block. I'm going to connect the wire to it. And I'm going to connect it back to our analog simulator. Now open wire went away on our analog simulator. And also over here you can see we're showing 20 million. But what we've done is we've added another load into our circuit. And with that you can take this Ohm's Law pie chart and calculate the voltage that's going to be across that resistor. I'll put a link to this in the description. But mainly, okay, we're looking for voltage. And so that is E and highlighted yellow in this chart. And so then you can go off of that into the areas from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock and figure out, okay, what do we know? Well, we know our milliamps and we know our resistance. So if we take our current milliamp signal, which is 20 milliamps, and we multiply it by our load resistor, which is 250 ohms, then we can come out with that we should have 5 volt across this terminal. So here I have a voltmeter and we're going to put it across it. And there you go, we have 5 volt across that. And that is how a PLC or any milliamp input actually reads a signal. If it doesn't really read a milliamp signal, is it reads the voltage across a load resistor. So now let's take it one step further and let's get it over on our digital display where we can look at the milliamps and volts at the same time. Now to do this, I'm going to have to make a couple of modifications. Right now, this is not common to our 24 volt power supply. So we are going to tie the minus of this milliamp signal to the common of our 24 volt power supply so that we can use our voltage meter. And I'll put step by step instructions in the description on how we did all this. Then we're going to take our voltage terminal, which is terminal number one on our trainer, and we're going to connect it to the second terminal that we added. So now we can see we have 20 milliamp here, we have 20 milliamp here, and we have 5 volts. So I've created this spreadsheet right here, 
and you can see the exact voltage that it should be. So let's go to 16 milliamps. And at 16 milliamps, we should show 4 volt on our meter. All right, 16 milliamps here, 16 milliamps here, 4 volt there. Next, let's go to 12 milliamp. So now we have 12 milliamp here, 12 milliamp there, 3 volt. And you can keep doing this, and let's just go on down to 4 milliamp. Now we have 4 milliamp here. We have four milliamp here and we have one volt there. So that is how a PLC actually reads an analog signal, is it takes that load resistor and calculates the milliamps based off of the voltage that you have. Now there are other resistor values that are used besides 250 ohm. I just used it because it is kind of a common one. Another thing, if you see a signal that is two to 10 volt, Chances are that is a milliamp signal with a 125 ohm resistor. Now one tip I will give when you think about adding devices into an analog circuit is typically a thousand ohms is about all you can drive. And we're going to do another video that kind of goes through why that is and why there are limits on load resistance. I hope this video has been helpful. Please like this video if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.